Well, good Saturday evening, everyone. I wanted to get on here, do an update video on Hurricane Lee that we have in the kind of central Atlantic Ocean right now. Latest model runs as of midday Saturday are actually showing a little bit of a Western shift, especially with the European model. So I do wanna take a look at that. That is now actually showing a potential landfall in the Northeastern US. So as much as this is certainly right now out over open waters and over the coming days will very likely and almost surely stay out over the Atlantic. It is more and more of a possibility that possibly maybe a week to eight days from now, we could see Hurricane Lee moving more north, picking up speed, and possibly brushing the northeastern U.S. So we do have to make sure that we're not letting our guard down. So I do want to take a look at what Lee looks like right now, as well as those updated model runs. So this is the infrared satellite of Hurricane Lee right now. Certainly did struggle a lot yesterday, significantly weakened from a Category 5 all the way down to a, kind of a lower end Category 3 hurricane. That's where lead clock's in right now. We have winds of about 115 miles an hour. Uh, we can see kind of the Leeward Islands right here on the bottom left. And then we do have some of these more cooler, larger cloud tops here. A little bit more of that reinvigoration kind of right there at the start. Uh, but again, still no eye. It, it's still struggling with the environment. There's some shear coming out of the southwest right now, and that has caused the weakening that we've seen. Although we could see some strengthening as Lee generally over the coming days continues to move off to the west-northwest here. Um, so that's what we're watching right now. Again, certainly still a, a very strong hurricane, but right now no, no impacts to land being felt. Um, when we do look at some of those latest model runs here, I do want to take a look at the European model. So this is from kind of midday today. And so what we can see is kind of starting out here. Let's start around the, the start of Monday. Um, so what we've got here, obviously the U.S. coast here. Here's Florida, the Bahamas, Bermuda's up here, and here's Hurricane Lee. So as we move through the early part of this next work week, what we're going to see is somewhere probably around probably Wednesday or so, we're going to start to see Hurricane Lee start to move more, almost due north here. And so you can kind of see that trend happening. Again, it's moving kind of north, almost west-northwest here. Now we get into Wednesday and it starts to curve off to the north. One reason that we're going to see that is right here, you can see that we're going to have this upper level low and a little bit of a trough here that kind of digs down across the northeast. And so that's going to help to almost kind of pull Hurricane Lee up to the north. So that is something that we're going to have to watch. And so as we move through the middle to end part of next week, what we're going to see is Hurricane Lee starts to move in just this general north direction, well off the eastern seaboard. Again, no, no threat to the mid-Atlantic or anything, but you can start to notice another trough and upper level low up here, kind of right over the you know northern Midwest or southern Canada. And then it starts to sweep down across the northeast and almost pulls Hurricane Lee in, at least in this European model. So let's move this forward a little bit and watch. As we see that, it kind of digs down here and then Lee starts to almost move a little bit to the northwest with each little run. And so we can see that there's actually going to be kind of this north-northwest pull as this trough moves off to the east. And so we can see what that does is it brings Hurricane Lee, it accelerates north, and makes landfall right around probably Rhode Island to Massachusetts. This would be showing Sunday evening into possibly early Monday. Um, so still about eight days away, but this is something that we've seen a shift in a couple of the models and especially the European showing this real strong, deep digging trough and kind of tending to pull Hurricane Lee more to the west and up in to the Northeast US. So certainly we're gonna have to watch a lot of the previous models and still a lot of the models kind of show this general kind of moving back off to the Northeast, not the same trough here that pulls it in. So we will have to watch that for sure. Um, but again, I think we, we, we could have a potential threat here for the Northeastern US. I do wanna take a look at, at a different model here. What we can see here, this is an ensemble model of the GFS. So this is another weather model. It doesn't just use one run, but multiple, and then kind of puts it together to form an average solution. So what we can see here, again, general track is all the same here, early to midweek, moves northwest, and then starts to move north. 
But what you can see is a little different here is that the average of the models is a little bit further out here to the east. It's not quite as far to the west. So that as it moves north, more likely it moves towards the Canadian Maritimes, the Nova Scotia area, rather than almost a little bit more back to the west and hitting the northeast U.S. So certainly no guarantee that we're going to see any northeast U.S. impacts. But again, I think whenever we're seeing one model that it is fairly accurate and the European model handled Hurricane Sandy back in 2012. A lot of the other models were showing, oh, it's going to curve out into the ocean. And the European was showing, no, it's actually going to get pulled in to the northeastern U.S. So again, no guarantee, uh, you know, we don't need to panic or evacuate or something like that. But I think we do want to pay very close attention if you live in the northeast, especially if you live um, in even the you know Nova Scotia area. Really, this whole area from probably around New York City all the way to the Canadian Maritimes, this whole area right in here definitely needs to pay attention going into the weekend of next weekend and then the very early part of next week for possibly certainly a hurricane could be landfalling in this area. So that's a little bit of the latest models here. Other thing I did want to take a look at, these are the sea surface temperatures here in the uh, Atlantic right now. So these yellow, orange, reddish colors, those are warmer waters. And then obviously the bluish, white, green, those are cooler temperatures. So what we can see is there is this little pocket kind of right here in the eastern North Atlantic, or I guess western North Atlantic that would be. Um, and we've got these cooler sea surface temperatures. This is where Hurricane Franklin about two weeks ago and Hurricane Idalia after Hurricane Idalia kind of came off the southeastern U.S. coast. Both of those systems really kind of churned up the water. So these waters aren't quite as warm. Um, so that will be something that may play a factor in Hurricane Lee. Again, Hurricane Lee is down about here right now. It's going to move again this way and then start to move up here. So it will be interacting likely with these cooler waters. That will probably likely help it to start weakening. So even if there were to be some sort of a northeast U.S. impact, it would be a system that's not as strong as it is now, possibly still a hurricane, but likely in more of a weakening trend. So that will be something that we'll have to watch as well. So um, again, hope this update was helpful with Hurricane Lee. Again, we have a little bit of a Western, more Western track with some of the models, especially the European that we'll have to be paying attention to over the coming days. Again, still out in the Atlantic right now, no, no immediate threats to land and um, again, but something that we don't want to let our guard down, we do need to keep a, a close eye on. So hope everybody has a good rest of your Saturday and a good weekend. I'll see you back for the next video.